Good morning. Uh, for those that don't know me, I'm Virginia Walton. I'm a certified personal coach. Prior to starting my coaching practice, I spent 24 years in the banking and finance industry, where I worked my way up from teller to small community bank to senior vice president of a $27 billion bank by the time I was 38. And if you think it was fancy degrees and family connections that got me there, I wish. I went to Rutgers University because that's what I could afford. And when I finished college, my father was the biggest deadbeat dad in the county. So clearly not the family connections that, that got me there. So about a little over 10 years ago, um, I was the lowest level of management in our organization at the time. And we were all required to participate in leadership development training. And when I met with my coach and he read the results of my 360 degree survey, if you don't know what that is, ping me, text me, I'll, I'll let you know, and heard the Cliff Notes version of my life, he said, wow, that all makes sense. And if you don't change, you're not going any further. Again, I was in my early 30s. I didn't have 30 years to work. And I was at the lowest level of management possible. That sounded awful. So I embraced the process. And along the way, I developed this incredible passion for learning more about leadership development and personal development. I've accumulated in excess of 2,500 hours of self-study in addition to several hundred hours of formal training. So here I am now. And today we wanna to talk about asking for help. If you're like me, it can be really hard. And as I was preparing for this talk, the visual in my mind was when we get home from the grocery store and we've got or all of our errands and we've got all these bags that we've got to bring in and you're like, I can get it in one trip. I can get it. You know, and you've got bags everywhere and you, you've managed to get the key in the door and you come in and like, you can barely get them off your hands and fingers because they're, the plastic is cutting through. You've got the rope shopping bag handle marks in your arm because you were determined to do it in one rather than make two trips or heaven forbid, try to get somebody in the house to come out and help you. So if that sounds familiar, you're in the right place. So I realized, I think it's two lessons that um, I learned as a young child that really were the foundation for why it's difficult to ask for help. My parents divorced when I was six. And after that, my mom made it very clear throughout my youth and growing up that she never wanted me to be dependent on a man. I'm guessing that at some point in her marriage, she felt dependent on my father and didn't, and it must have caused some sort of personal struggle. And she didn't want me to have that experience. Like all good parents, they want better for their children. So she wasn't telling me men are bad or you can't have a relationship or don't ever get married. It was be able to take care of yourself, stand on your own two feet. So I did. In addition, that message was reinforced by the fact that we didn't have extra money. We didn't have much money. So when something broke, we fixed it. There was n rarely calling an electrician, a plumber. My mom changed the oil on her car. You know, we, the porch was rotting. We tore it off and we built a new deck. And then when mom got some secondhand windows and doors, we made it an enclosed porch. When the foundation was crumbling on the barn, she re-cemented it so the barn didn't fall down. That was just how we, how we roll. So when I got my own home, I too, it's 24, not a lot of extra money. So, you know, there was no calling painters and carpenters. So you did on your own and I just kept doing. And so while I'm grateful for those lessons, I'm grateful to stand on my own two feet. At times it can present a challenge. You know, my professional success and the, my sense of independence 
created some noise in my prior two relationships. So when Brian and I started dating, I'm like, I'm too old for this crap. I laid it out. I said, listen, I may have a good job. I make a decent living. I can stand on my own two feet. Now, granted, I'm not a plumber or an electrician, but I had the means that I could write the check or hand over my credit card. So I'm like, if that's an issue, dude, we're done. We live in a small town. We're going to see each other everywhere. And his response was, that's great. It's actually kind of nice to not have to take care of somebody. I would like that. But if you could need me once in a while, that'd be great too. Oh, he wants to be needed. Okay, light bulb. You know what? We all want to be needed. Here, as a single woman, in you know, homeowner, small frame, there were times where I just couldn't physically move something on my own because it needed two people or I needed help jumpstarting the lawnmower or putting my battery maintainer on my car. And it would pain me because I'm not mechanical to have to go ask my neighbor for help. And I have wonderful neighbors. Fabulous. Can't complain. Would do anything for me. But I didn't want to be a burden. Because we had seen that too. So he kind of laughed at me every time. Like I'd be out there struggling. I mean, I had these wood doors that were warped and old and the tracks were rusted on my, on my detached garage. And I barely could get them open and closed. I'd throw my whole body weight. I mean, two hands and a foot against these to close. And if he was outside, he'd laugh and he'd go, you want a hand? And I'd be like, well, if they'll get you to stop laughing, of course. What was the big deal? Why was I putting myself at risk of falling on my face rather than just saying, hey, you're standing right there. Could you come help me? Pride. And that not wanting to be a burden. The other struggle was more on a professional level. There, asking for help wasn't about being a burden. It was about, how am I being judged? It was more about a sign, feeling like I was showing a sign of weakness. Not weakness in terms of physical strength, because banking doesn't really require a lot of physical strength. Unless you've ever moved a bo couple of boxes of quarters or $1,000 worth of quarter. There's a little weight there. But when you finance paper, it's not that heavy. But I never wanted to look or give a reason for somebody to think she doesn't know what she's doing. She doesn't deserve the seat at the table. And maybe that's because I was the first one in my family to get that seat at the table. So I probably didn't always feel confident. So I would, you know, take on too much and struggle to delegate. Keep in mind, most days, as I advanced in my career, banking is predominantly male industry, even so, and particularly in my office. Not only was I often the only woman at the table, uh, I was also notably younger than most of my peers. I was in my late 30s when I was made a senior vice president. They were in their late 40s and early 50s. So just by age, they had more experience than I did. So I didn't want them to look down on me. So I wouldn't ask for help. The silliest example of where that came through was <clears throat> years ago. I don't, I don't think I was a senior vice president yet. I was working on a transaction and I didn't believe that we would finance this type of equipment. But before you said no, because salespeople will challenge every time you say no to a deal. It's the nature of the relationship. I wanted to double check. So there was, I went through our policy and then I emailed my superior and said, Hey, just double checking. We don't finance this. And he emailed me back 
Correct. We won't finance that. And we also will not finance WMD. What's WMD? Okay, if you know, you're smarter than me. Um, kudos. I didn't know. I had been in the equipment finance industry long enough that I knew the vast majority of the acronyms. Because like every industry, it's got its own little set of initials and acronyms for everything. I could not figure it out. I'm racking my brain. I'm looking through policies and procedures. And I'm like, what is this? Freaking out that I should know this. Oh my God, I don't know this. I Google it. Ready? If you didn't know, cool, we're on the same page. WMD, Weapons of Mass Destruction. No kidding. Of course, we're not going to finance that. Who would? So here I wasted all this time during my workday and all this mental energy and stress because I was too afraid to ask for clarification, to ask for a form of help, to say, hey, can you just clarify what that acronym stands for? To which I'm sure he would have responded, oh, sorry, Virginia, I was making a joke. He would have moved on with his day. He wouldn't have thought any less of me. A sense of humor is not a requirement in a credit function. It helps, but it's not required. So it wouldn't have made me look bad or incompetent, but here I was too afraid to say, time out. What's that acronym? Which only got worse when we were, as we became part of a regulated bank. There's a whole other set of list of acronyms. So fast forward a few years, I'm a little bit more advanced. I've gotten a little smarter. And one day we're sitting in a meeting and now I have a different superior in the room. And he says, some acronym. I'm like, I don't know what that is. I go, hey, one sec. I don't recognize that acronym. Could you clarify what that is? He proceeded to tell me what it was. It was a report. It was a management report. I knew exactly what he was talking about. I had never heard it referred to with that term. So not only did he stop, tell me what it was, he then started to explain what this report was. I knew it. I said, oh, I'm with you. I know what that is. I just didn't know it by that name. Now, had I taken the same approach I took with the whole WMD, I would have been spinning in my head, looking it up on my computer, totally missing the discussion in the meeting where I was supposed to be present. Hmm. So not only would I have wasted time, mental energy, I would have missed doing what I was there to do. So I actually would have, had I not stopped and said, wait, I don't know that. Clarify that for me. Help me know what you're talking about. I would have not been doing the best work at that moment because my brain would have been elsewhere. Hmm. So you see, the only one judging us is ourselves. Now, again, there's a balance. If you don't know basic stuff and you're trying to fake it, then yeah, asking questions after every sentence, then you probably should revisit what you're doing. But that's not the case. Most of us don't get to those spots by being incompetent. So when you don't know something or you need somebody to help you, because listen, there's no way I can get this done in this timeline. Help. I used to struggle to delegate things to my staff. You know what? I was burning myself out and they were missing on the opportunity to learn something new. Here's the even bigger irony with this, right? I don't want to be a burden. I don't want to be incompetent. Yet when I had a team, I would always tell them, ask. If you need help, tell me. If you don't understand, ask. I'd much rather you come to me before it becomes a problem or we're behind or you do something wrong and waste your time and we have to redo it. 
I wasn't practicing what I was preaching. Duh. It's okay to ask for help. I told those who sat in my team it was, but I didn't tell myself. So if you're telling your kids, your students, you know, your staff, your colleagues, your neighbors, hey, it's okay to ask for help. I'm here to help you. Do the same. Part of why is you want what's best for them. You also, it probably gives you a sense of accomplishment, contribution by helping them. So let others have that feeling. Don't be greedy. So with that, I'm going to practice what I preach. And I'm going to ask you for help. Please share this video or like it or I guess that's it. <laughs> Subscribe to my channel. Check out my web page. But by you sharing it, maybe you didn't need to hear this. But maybe somebody you do know does. So you're not only helping me to help get my message out, but there may be somebody in your circle who's like, oh my gosh, I've been struggling with that. I needed to hear that. Or you know what? I need help with that. Let me reach out to Virginia. It's a simple ask. I don't think I'm being a burden, but share. You don't know who you might help and who might appreciate you for doing so. So if you are the one who's like, yeah, can you help me with this? Okay. Or you're interested in finding out more how coaching can benefit you the way it has me. Let's chat. Let's connect. So check out my Facebook page. Drop me a comment. You can drop a comment on LinkedIn. Um, check out my website, virginiawalton.com. You'll find my number to call or text me there. I'm here to help. And it's okay to ask me to help. I want to do it. So with that, be well.